Hello friends, Jay Todd here at the Global Gaming Expo. I am so excited to be here. We didn't know if it was gonna happen. We are properly socially distanced. I've caught up with Casey Clark from the American Gaming Association. Casey, the, the event looks just as big and huge as it always does. There's people everywhere. It's great to be back, but we're here to talk about sports betting. And sports betting has been expanding phenomenally across so many different states. And it got me to wondering, could the pandemic have actually helped the growth of online sports betting? Sure, I mean, the pandemic did a lot of things, right? It made everybody refocus on where you bring the, how you bring the experience to customers instead of the customers to the property. And I think that that really enabled a lot of growth in iGaming in some states and, and, and certainly sports betting. And this was a rare bright spot and a really difficult time for the industry. Yeah, you know, I, I look at it and I see, I see, you know, there was always this uh, this blowback, this pushback, this negative attitude about sports betting. It had a, a negative connotation to it in America, at least, certainly not internationally. But now over here, we're seeing that I think you guys recently did a poll and that the overall uh, um, opinion of Americans towards sports betting now is very positive. People love to bet on sports, and Americans have loved to bet on sports for a long time. I think the biggest myth that, that's going on around this issue is that people are just now starting to bet on sports in America, right? The, what we're doing is giving people legal, safe, regulated ways to do this that have the right kind of protections for consumers, the right kind of protections for the game, the right kind of protections for the bet. All around, this is a much better system for Americans to allow them to do something they've been doing forever. So now in 33 jurisdictions around the country, there's going to be opportunities for Americans to bet legally. 115 million American adults can now bet at home, which is pretty important pretty remarkable from where we were just three years ago. No, that's that's true. Uh, 33 uh, jurisdictions, uh, if my math is correct, that's more than half the country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they said I'd never use my high school math. But, you know, the connotation being there, do you think it was partly the government's fault? I mean, they, they criminalize it, so they when you criminalize something that people enjoy, they're going to continue to do it. Uh, it just goes underground. So. Part of the negative connotation could be the fact that over in Europe and the UK, the governments regulated it, and over here, the government vilified it. Well, look, I, I think it's a really good question in terms of what, what the government's role was. I think what they, they were well intended in terms of what they were trying to do to protect the integrity of competition, but all it did was create a massive black market. And so the protections I'm just talking about are so critical to, to creating a sustainable regulated marketplace to allow for the right kind of protections, right? We want someone who wants to bet on sports to do that safely and to be able to guarantee that they're going to get paid out, to guarantee that they have the right protections, guarantee they have access to the help that they might need if they can't handle the way that, you know, if they can't bet responsibly. So none of that ha happens in the illegal market. So people were betting on offshore sports books, corner bookies, all these people don't care whether you've got the resources to bet, place that bet don't really care about the integrity of the competition or the integrity of the, the athlete, right? So all of these things really come into play when you look at uh, federal regulation of gaming, which just didn't work, particularly on sports betting. You know, as you know, as well as anybody, gaming regulation on a state-by-state -state basis is how it works in this country. And so I think what we've really done is gotten back to what works. Exactly, it was a state's rights issue and the government, however well-intentioned, may or may not have contributed to its uh, its appearance from the American people. But now, the important thing is, we're on track, and you guys, more and more, uh, can bet safely, securely, and trust the integrity of, of where you're placing your bets. Uh, last question. We're looking at this map, and casinos are growing, and the gambling industry is re responding from the pandemic. Do you think that sports betting, because so much of it is online and mobile, will be a catapult to see more online traditional gaming like casino games and slots. Well, uh, yes, I think I think people feel uh, much more comfortable with sports betting than they do other forms of gaming. So it is a little bit of a bridge to getting people to be more comfortable with that access to those things. But I also think that um, you know, casino gaming is in 44 states now. This is not new to people anymore. It is no longer a destination only vehicle for adult entertainment. It's available to a lot of people in a lot of places. And so we're really good at entertaining people. We're really good at bringing that experience to you and making sure it fits for what you would want, right? Which might be different than what I want. And so I think what our members do at the AGA really focus on the customer experience in a really unique way. And so bringing that to people where they might want it is important. So opportunities to, to expand iGaming was a real bright spot in terms of state economies and other things that really needed the tax revenue in the pandemic, and certainly more are continuing to look at that as an option. 
You know, that's, uh, that's very encouraging. As someone who originally started in this industry as a webmaster working in online gambling, I love to see the country, America, finally embracing this great, amazing product. And I'm very happy that you guys are involved because that just lends integrity and credibility to the whole thing. Thank you so much for coming on, Casey. Appreciate it.